One of the more interesting initiatives that seems to be quite apparent and on display here at this event that Sony is putting on are free games. Yes, I mean free games. We're calling them free to play, but uh, they really are free to play. I did not realize this until now. Um, games like Blacklight Retribution and DC Universe Online do not require the PlayStation Plus subscription to be able to be played and enjoyed. So where I thought there was at least some hidden cost, it's not there. That means there's at least three games that you're going to be able to have to play for free, DC Universe Online, Blacklight Retribution, and Warframe. Um, I sat down and talked with uh, both, both Jared Garretson of Zombie Studios, who are behind Blacklight, and the team with DC Universe Online, and it sounds like there was quite a bit of excitement on their part to be able to kind of reshape the narrative in the dialogue with gamers about free-to-play games, because there really is that sense of suspicion that how are they kind of sneaking into my wallet? Or is the game completely unbalanced, so I have to pay money? And they were quite adamant that that's not the case. And by making these games so easily and readily available to people at the launch of it, people might just discover what their intentions are, and that could really open up some fun opportunities for more interesting games, for MMOs, to be able to be in a console environment, and for people to check them out and experiment them with very, very low risk. Um, like I said, they're available at launch. I'm gonna try them out. You know why? They're completely free. Now, I know there's a lot of statements where it's free to play is the future, and they're gonna have traditional console games for lunch. I think Really, this is going to demonstrate that there is a happy coexistence with both indie, with the free-to-play scene, and with the traditional $60 console games. It also allows for you as the consumer to be a little more liberal in trying to populate your library because you're already starting to see that there's some elasticities to the cost. Yes, it's always going to be probably $60 for a console game, but you have free games that you can you know play with in the interim as well as the much lower-priced indie titles. This is a very interesting environment that Sony's getting into that might be able to keep players that much more engaged with the console, not just waiting around for the next big blockbuster to hit the shelves. I think also by having it sort of on the console, you're taking what I think is one of the biggest barriers to entry for free-to-play games, which is you're kind of interacting with a service that's on their own server and you don't really know anything about them. You don't know if you're in some shady corner of the internet. It's all happening right there in the PlayStation 4 environment, which definitely gives the impression that someone is paying attention and there's a tacit endorsement of using a game like this. All right, don't stop here. There is more PlayStation 4 coverage. Go watch it now.